in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Act of faith. My God, I believe in you and all that your church teaches because you have said it and your word is true. Act of hope. My God, I hope in you for grace and for glory because of your promises, your mercy and your power. Act of charity. My God, because you are so good, I love you with all my heart and for your sake I love my neighbor as myself. Act of thanksgiving. Oh my God, I thank you for all the benefits which I have ever received from you and especially this day. Give me light to see what sins I have committed and grant me grace to be truly sorry for them. Act of contrition. Oh my God, because you are so good, I am very sorry that I have sinned against you and by the help of your grace, I will not sin again. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 6, from verses 51 to 58. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Our brief reflection will center on the Gospel message, which I entitled, The Holy Eucharist as the Spiritual Food. The Holy Eucharist is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was during the Passover meal that Jesus ate with his apostles that he instituted the Holy Eucharist. Jesus is the true Lamb of God. Sacrificed on the cross and offered again in an unbloody manner at the Mass. He is also the strength of our souls. He is the rich food that came down from heaven, which we call the Holy Communion. Holy Eucharist is the sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Under the appearance of bread and wine, the body, the blood, soul and divinity of Christ are really, truly and substantially present for the nourishment of souls and as a sacrifice of the church. The Catholic churches celebrate the Holy Eucharist in the obedience to the words of Jesus at the Last Supper. Do this in memory of me. Luke chapter 22 verse 19. At this time, Jesus gave the apostles both the power and command to bring the Holy Eucharist to us through the institution of the sacred priesthood. Holy Eucharist is at the center of our Christian faith. There are other names given to the Holy Eucharist. They include the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread, and the table of the Lord. So in this gospel message, Jesus emphasizes on the worthy reception of the Holy Eucharist, which is his body and blood. Holy Eucharist serves as the following. 1. Memorial. 
that records and commemorates the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, which is the highest form of sacrifice ever performed on earth. Secondly, nourishment. It provides the spiritual nourishment and strength. Just as, just as our bodies need physical sustenance, our souls need the body and blood of Christ as spiritual nourishment. Third, thanksgiving. This expresses gratitude for God's love and redemption for mankind. So Holy Eucharist is a powerful symbol of God's love and peace. There are four effects of the Holy Eucharist on the recipient. One, it unites us with Christ. Jesus, in John chapter 6, from verses 53 to 54, said, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Verse 54 says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. 2. It increases sanctifying grace on the worthy recipients. 3. It washes away venial sins. And 4. It brings about a pledge of eternal happiness. So today, we ask again, how do we prepare ourselves for the worthy reception of the Holy Eucharist? We must be in the state of grace and examine ourselves very well before receiving it. St. Paul articulated this very well in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verses 27 to 30. Verse 27, St. Paul says, Whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 29 says, For all who eat and drink without discerning the body and eat and drink the cup will have eternal eternal condemnation verse 30 says for this reason many of you are weak and some have died so we end this reflection with the famous hymn let us sing together I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me shall not die. No man can come to me unless the Father draws him. And I will raise him up. And I will raise him up. And I will raise him up on the last day. Let us pray. Father Almighty, you teach us how to celebrate the Passover mystery of the Holy Eucharist in the Mass. Help us to understand your great love for us. May the goodness you now show us confirm our hope in your future mercy. May we celebrate the Holy Eucharist with reverence and love. For when we proclaim the death of the Lord, you continue the work of his redemption. All glory and praise be to you, to your divine Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night and sweet dreams.